And here we are. Hi, everyone. Lily, hi. Hi, Mikey. First live we've ever done. And wait, I've got something else on my other computer going crazy. Hold on, hold on. Just going to shut this off. Okay, sorry. That's what happens when you're doing live stuff. <laughs> it's it's Mikey, how come I don't have a... How come I don't have a little thingy on my like that says Leah Remini? Oh, because this is my um, YouTube channel. It's not for oh. that's not on you. It's just I had that view on the big side by side rather than the expanded. <laughs> okay, now I'm you can see it's busting your chops. I just busted your chops. Hi oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah. You is get one here. How do you tell? How do you know? Look, you can see. Okay, yeah. right now there is thirteen hundred and thirteen people watching live hi everybody can you see that up in the corner no even with okay. my glasses on but that's okay well but can you see that there is a number up there or you don't have that on your end i don't see that i don't that's remember okay let's move on hi everybody hi <laughs> i'm the only person that's got to answer you all the other people haven't got have got oh, an well, opportunity take, to say anything take... they can they can put their comments there oh you see them yes okay we're we're muddling our way through <laughs> this <laughs> all right look see yes all right i see it okay so the the reason that we're doing this is because leah got up at the crack of dawn this morning to go and attend the hearing on danny masterson's sentencing and of course, she brings her unique perspective. You know, Aaron already did a, a live feed where he yeah. covered sort of the nuts and bolts of what happened. You know, for anybody that may not be familiar, Danny Masterson was sentenced to life in prison. Correct. He is only eligible for parole after 30 years. And there was a lot of uh, detail about how that came about and what his lawyers were arguing you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, we're not going to repeat that stuff. Yeah. And um, if you haven't seen it, you should. Aaron did a great job yes. of, of uh, describing what happened, the events of today. So if you haven't seen that, guys, you should see that. Uh, but that's not what I'm or what, you know, I can do. And I wouldn't do it as well because uh, I'm not there from that uh, perspective. And I, you know, don't quite understand everything that's going on anyway. Um, and, and I'm, I'm there as an advocate for the victims, um, you know, to, to be there for them. And so that's what my focus is on making sure that I can service be of service to them. And that's what I've been, I hope for the last seven years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause we started this, uh, when we were doing the aftermath Correct. and, you know, we went to visit each one of these victims and actually filmed with interviews with them Correct. and spent a lot of time actually with them because their stories were so devastating. And I don't mean stories like they're making up stories. I mean, their experiences were yeah. so devastating and it was so startling to me in particular that each of them had almost identical experiences mm -hmm. with Danny Masterson and his sexual predation. And I, I was like stunned by what had happened to them and the, the, the outrageousness of how they were treated and mm -hmm. you know a number of people have actually put in comments um i think yesterday saying well weren't you around and weren't you one of the people that was um a, you know taking it out on these victims because you were in osa at the time mm -hmm. i actually never heard about this case i you know People think that because I was the head of OSA, I knew about everything going on all the time. But remember, it, I was also in Clearwater full-time 
on the Lisa McPherson case from 1998 until 2003. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then I was basically in the hole. So right, and I and and I have uh, and Mike, I have accused you of this as well. Like when I left, I was like, "Did you know anything about my cycle? You had to have known things about my cycle. How, you were the head of OSA. How did you not know?" Right. And I understand now, after uh, you know, hitting you over the head with this with many questions over the years, I understand that 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 is the way C, the Sea Org works. Right. You guys were often, you know, good one minute in the hole the next. You were being beaten one minute, not being beaten the next. You were, you know, taken out of the hole, put into your Sea Org uniform, put on stage for all of us to clap for you, salute you, and then put back in the hole. And like you said, you were dealing with other sits, you know, big situations <laughs> in Scientology, like uh, the killing of Lisa McPherson. And if you guys don't know that story, please look it up. I never want her to be forgotten. Um, yes, and so we often... Here's here's what I here's what I do know from the first time we had ever talked to them when they started to explain to me the procedure of what they were put through. Of course, there's no there's no need to to confirm that I've been through it, Mike. You've been through it. Anytime right. something happens to a victim in Scientology, you are immediately interrogated as to what you did to have deserved being molested, raped, beaten. If you get into a car accident, you know, just sitting at the light while well, you were there. So you must have done something to have received being rear ended. And so you're right. always the person who's interrogated where where I am, you know, for specifically today. Right. I mean, we, we've been through this for seven years, like we've said, with with them uh, mm -hmm. doing our best to be supportive uh, as, as we can doing anything we could tweeting about it, posting about it, doing anything we could to help uh them them to receive justice however they these women i am in awe of for not just it wasn't enough right that they were brutally raped it's that these women then were they reported these crimes to scientology when they happened they were then put through interrogations punished and we have, you know, they had to pay for it, right? We all have to pay for our own punishment. So thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but it didn't end there, right? Because we're talking now stretching 20 year span, right? Then right. for reporting the crime to the police when it happens 20 years ago, <laughs> um, they were then turned into fair game. So their families, their friends, everything they have ever known, when we're talking about uh, specifically Jane Doe One, uh, she, she's a second generation Scientologist. She was raised in it, born in it, raised in it. That's all she ever knew. So on top of this crime, on top of this happening, she's lost everything she has ever known, right? Yep. Including her mother, yep. who's... A Scientologist. To this um, day. To this day. And that mother has now taken her firstborn um, to, to her side. And the, the levels of pain, right? It's the levels of pain. It doesn't just end with today. They're still being fair game by Scientology. They're still being followed, hunted down, uh, stalked, hunted by, on Twitter with social, you know, on um uh, uh, all social media fronts uh, by Scientologists, civilian Scientologists who, who are doing the work for OSA. And it doesn't end. Um, listening to the, the victim impact statements, um, again, I, 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 it was very hard for me to remain, you know, I, I feel like I have to, I can't react, I can't cry because I don't want them to see me crying like that would mean that I was being weak you know and I couldn't be right. there for them <laughs> um and so I I tried but I failed um at the task um but listening to the to what's happened to their lives what's happened to their families that their families have been destroyed that um Jane Doe one can't sleep in the dark she can't take a shower she um can't go on. I, I, I know so much about their every day of what they suffer. Um, and I don't think people really get that it's not just about the crime that was right. 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 It's, it's, it's continuing it's, 
today. It, it, it's emotionally scarring, and mm -hmm. those scars do not heal. At least they don't heal for a long, long time if they and ever also, do. Mike, they're not allowed to heal. Like, I, I'm sure um, people try to pick up the pieces that are not Scientologists who were raped, who were molested, who were abused, um, but they're they're not allowed to because Scientology won't allow them to. Right. They're friends who are Scientologists who should have come forward. The mother of Jane Doe One, who who, I mean, let, let me just read you something. To, like th this is what we're talking about. And if you guys wanted to come on here, I'm sorry if you wanted to come on here and thought I was going to talk to you about like, uh, and then section one, two, three dash nine, four was brought up. Like I could, that's, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody was you expecting get from that. Me. You ain't going to get from <laughs> me. But, uh, and like I said, Aaron Smith Levin did an amazing job on that. But these, there was so much that was said from N Trout, uh, also I, I think referred to as Jane Doe too. Um, she said at the end of her victim impact statement, she said, um, I'm not quoting her, but she said something to the effect of, um, I don't wish you harm, Danny. You know, I want you to get better. And this is all they have ever wanted. This is all they have ever wanted from Scientology. They just said, please make him take responsibility as individuals. They were saying this. They didn't even know about each other at the time. Right. Uh, we just want him to own up and heal and get better. Um, but she said she didn't wish him harm. And then she said, and I forgive you. And I was really like, I was just like, Ugh. you know what I mean? The, it, okay. And Chrissy uh, Bixler um, had her statement read and she was there with her, you know, beautiful husband and what had happened to her life, how she was stripped of her life and how she had to fight for her life. Um, and she too has PTSD and, you know, she's been hunted and stalked by Scientology. Uh, Jane Doe One says um, about her dad. Uh, can I read that, Mike? Yes, of course. Okay. Lee. She, I'm just going to read part of it. But she said, um, I was raped 20 years ago on my father's 55th birthday, April 25th, 20, 2003. I love my father very much, and I still recall the last time I spoke to him and what he said. It was August 13th, 2010, my birthday, and he called to wish me happy birthday. And the last thing we said to each other was, I love you. And he passed away that weekend. I also recall the last time that I talked to my mother. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really tired. I've been up since four. I also think it's that time. Oh, okay. Okay. The last time I heard from my mother and what she said to me, it was February <clears throat> 2020. And she texted me and told me to never contact her again. She had warned me ahead of time that she wanted to see Danny Masterson brought to justice for raping, but not at the expense of her religion, Scientology. And then she goes on to say that at one point she mattered to her mother. And I was just really affected by these brave women as I sat there thinking about, you know, again, the layers, right? We're talking about the layers. It's not about just a rape that happened, just a rape that happened 20 years ago. It's about the scars that you talked about, Mike, but also that she doesn't have her mother. Right. And she doesn't have her daughter. And another thing that really hit me was that in somewhere in her, her statement and her, impact, her victim impact statement, she talked about an NDA that Scientology tried to force on her dad. Her dad was trying to make a deal with Scientology, with OSA, the Office of Special Affairs. And they said, we're going to give you, the dad, $400,000, and you have to sign this piece of paper. And um, Danny had, I, I might be mixing up two different times, but... Uh, that they had put in this NDA that her nine-year-old daughter at the time could not ever speak about her mother's rape. 
and Danny had put money on her daughter's nine-year-old daughter Scientology account for when she could get, you know, Scientology auditing, right? If that had ever impacted her negatively, he wanted to make sure that he had put money on her daughter's Scientology account. And I, I think that I heard like a, like in the, you know, I could have imagined it, but I was like, I, I mean, I, I was, I was like, what, 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 you know what I mean? Like, Mike, it, it was just so insane. I know. For, it, a, it, for a rape you're claiming you didn't commit. Right. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I watched Aaron's video and obviously the, the judge wasn't buying that line either. Um, having made the point that that's an awful lot of money to pay for something you say you never did. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, but. And I, and I understand, and, and, and listen, she's, she's a, she's a hero as well. I mean, I'm sure she's putting up with fair game herself as a judge. I'm sure Scientology has sent in many <laughs> letters accusing her of religious bigotry and unethical practices, everything that Scientology has done in this case. Um, they're accusing everybody else of. And uh, again, as I sat there, Mike, in the courtroom, and, you know, I had N. Trout on one side, Chrissy, you know, Jane Doe uh, one, I, I, I just, all I could do was keep reaching over, grabbing their hands, just because I was like, you guys fought to be here. Right. And the emotion and the composure the courage that it took for them to fight to be here to get this justice and i and i, I don't think they really understand and i hope maybe they they um, they they represent hope for scientology victims they are literally the beacon of like yes. strength and courage and they are true heroes because they have no idea how many texts i get about them about how their a little piece of their Scientology victim was healed by what they were willing to do. And it doesn't come today, it doesn't end like, oh, aren't we all celebrating? We're not. This doesn't feel good right. to them. This doesn't feel it feels good only that they were believed. Somebody exactly. believed them and said, This your rape wasn't your fault. This is what they've been told. This is what they've been taught. This is what they've been brainwashed. Uh, and people believe them. I think that means is significant, but they're not off celebrating. Yeah. Because it doesn't, at the end of the day, Mike, this doesn't feel good for anybody. I, I, I couldn't agree patient. with you more, Leah. Yes. I couldn't agree with you. Sorry, more. I talked for like an hour. Are you guys bored? How are you guys doing? No, no, no. Like okay. everybody's like okay. there's a lot. I'm looking down at the comments and there's okay. a lot of people. There's now 4,550 people watching this live. Thank so you. So there's a lot of a lot of interest and it's not getting less. So people aren't abandoning you because <laughs> you, <laughs> no, it's okay. you're talking it's okay. about I wanted to say that I, I just want to it's just that Mike. I just want to make sure that people get how how they should be celebrated, how they should be revered. Yes, um, because of this, uh, be, not just because of their going up against their abuser, but because they're going up against a multi-billion-dollar cult. Which I said in my statement that although Scientology was not a co-defendant, they should have been. We've always maintained that. They know it. We know it. Um, and and uh, so that is why we so focus on that. Um, yeah. And Scientology is 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 involved in all cases having to do with Scientology or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I just want to go back to one thing um, that was that you mentioned that encapsulates the world of Scientology and this whole subject was that statement at the end of Jane Doe one's. Um, statement to the court that her mother said she wanted to see justice for Danny Masterson, but not at the expense of Scientology. Correct. And that is the essence of the problem with Scientology is that 
every Scientologist holds that view. This right. is not limited to, you know, the the rabid lunatics in the Office of Special Affairs. Mm -hmm. This is Scientology think that protecting Scientology is more important than protecting victims of someone who is a sexual predator. Correct. That protecting Scientology is more important than providing the information that you have to law enforcement so that justice may be done. Protecting Scientology is absolutely above and beyond all other things in the mind of a Scientologist, their relationship with their children, mm -hmm. that the mother was willing to abandon the daughter after having written, as we know, Leah, and I know that you want to read this, after having written to David Miscavige personally, mm -hmm. begging something be done about this situation mm -hmm. and laying out all of the information that, that they can turn their back on their own flesh and blood who they know have been abused by someone who is being protected by Scientology it is the essence of the evil that exists in Scientology. Correct. And if we go back to, we've talked about this many times, this is the term that Scientology that we all know called the greatest good, right? Like some damage has to be done for the greater good. And because Scientology is the answer to all, uh, well, to eternity, to everyone's eternity, they believe that their eternity is at stake, right? That they won't right. live again. They won't be able to remember their next life, their last life or whatever. Um, but also that the, the, you know, mankind won't continue. And if uh, you believe in basic Scientology uh, uh, concepts, you believe that your child is not really your child, that it's just a body with a spirit that has lived before that will live again. And so there's no kind of ownership or um, uh, a connection to your child uh, in Scientology, you know, it's like, well, that's a, you know, that's a spiritual being. That's not my right. daughter. She was probably my mother in another lifetime. And so that's why Scientology parents are very easily, you know, can easily give up their children. And we've seen that those letters from Scientology parents that say, you know, see you next lifetime. I hope to see you next lifetime. Um, it's sick. And I remember Julian Schwartz, who's a, a celebrity center international, um, uh, executive who works under David Miscavige. He's supposed to be the adjudicator of Scientology ethics, um, you know, Scientology standards, which which clearly are very low, everybody. Um, <laughs> um, but Julian was the reason that I also left Scientology. Julian is connected to a lot of situations in Scientology. Uh, the Danny Masterson uh, victims, he was connected to the, the Burbank uh, daycare, the Scientology daycare where babies were being molested and Julian allowed all of uh, those children and the Scientology parents all agree to not report this. Well, not to not report it, but not to cooperate with the investigation. Uh, so they couldn't press charges against that child molester. Um, but Julian Schwartz, I remember, I have the letter, Mike, and I'll, 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 I'll give it to you so you can post it. But I remember one of the letters that I wrote to Julian was I, I was recounting um, uh, our, our meeting. And this is when I was actually talking to you as well, Mike, you were considered right. a suppressive person. And I was talking to you about leaving Scientology when I was still in, but I was meeting with Julian Schwartz and David Miscavige. I was trying to make it right. I was trying to fix Scientology within. Right. And you were like, well, honey, you know, if you want to waste your time. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, Lisa Marie Presley was, I have, the emails from her going, get the F out of there. Like you're right. wasting your time. All they want is Intel on you. Tell them to go F themselves and tell, you know, and um, I said, I, I, I said, Julian, I looked at you and I said, so my mother who has been a Scientologist all her life and all of my life, basically, um, who's been a contributing member of Scientology, who joined the Sea Org, made her kids join the Sea Organization, who has given up uh, a lot of birthdays to all of her grandchildren because she was doing Scientology. 
all the years my mother missed anniversaries, didn't have savings because she was paying for Scientology. She wasn't home because she was doing Scientology. You tell me one day that my mother is a suppressive person and that I should disconnect from my mother, my own mother. You think I should take your word for it and <laughs> just disconnect from my own mother? Is that what you're telling me, Julian? That's exactly what I'm telling you. That's exactly what LRH is telling you. And I said, well, you you're effed up, man. I said, I don't know if it's because I'm Jewish. I mean, I don't know the, from the East Coast, but the, no. But I should just take your word for it and disconnect from my own mother. And this is what my daughter would be asked to do right. one day if she was raised in Scientology. Yeah. And this is what your kids did yeah. and stayed in Scientology. And your ex-wife decided. And this is what Jane Doe One's mother decided. And all of her Scientology friends that she was raised with. You know what I mean? It's like, you think of that. Like, I still mourn the loss of my so-called friends that I've known for 35 years. That we were there for the birth of each other's babies. You know, like, at my house, grew up with me. Like, my ba our babies were supposed to grow up together. Yep. It's, it's, it's just not something you get over. Yeah. Sorry, I keep blabbing on and on. Anyway, did you want to read? The, you want to read the the letter from the most ethical group on the planet? Did you read this, this Mike? I've I've read this. Oh, you yeah yeah yeah. The, case... You mean the one the one from the mother? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've read this. I read oh. it when we first got it. Okay, well, like, you guys, you can go to my substack. You can go to my <laughs> substack and read it. The letter from Jane Doe One's mother. Uh, also, Mike has it on his blog uh, with the definitions because it's like reading a different language. But this was the letter that she was going to read um, today. That she that she didn't get to read. She 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 didn't get to reading it. Um, but uh, she still did an amazing job. And she, I mean, what's insane to me, Mike, well, it's insane, right? Because this is to Dave Miscavige and it mentions, you know, Shane Woodruff, who is also my Scientology <clears throat> handler. Do you know that Shane's out of the Sea Org and working for a Scientology company? Oh, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, but that the mother... Uh, I think why I was emotional about this and, and the letters that the mother wrote is because when J. Doe one mentioned that this meant that her mother cared about her and that she reads this letter on Mother's Day. Oh, God, I'm sorry. To remind herself that she has a mother that cared about her. Right. But doesn't care about her enough. Right. Because she's chosen Scientology. Right. She's just, a mother that cares more about Scientology than she does about her daughter. Yes. Which is the essence of Scientology. Yes. <laughs> yes. And at, at, at this letter is a remarkable document. This yeah. letter, Leah and I saw this letter back in 2016, I guess it was, when we were talking to the victims and Jane Doe one told us that she had gotten uh, delivered to her a, a disc that supposedly had come from her father after her father w had died and that it was supposed to be delivered to her as part of the will or a state. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even remember, but that she could not read any of the, things that were on the disc and because they were encrypted and, and she, and she also gave them to, uh, to the LAPD. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, we helped get them decrypted so mm -hmm. that the documents could actually be accessible to her. And lo and behold, one of the documents on that disc was this letter from her mother to David Miscavige about what had happened to her daughter using information from the interrogations interrogations that had been done or the interviews that had been done or the information that had been gathered and turned into knowledge reports and knowledge reports are Scientology reports that are done 
on sort of anything and everything uh, when you believe that there is something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And this, I don't know if you want to read the whole thing or just we no, can just have no, people I go just, find people it. Can go, people can go and, and, and read it for themselves and just understand you need a dictionary for that, which is provided on my sub stack. Right. Yeah, go to Leah's Substack. That's where to find this thing. Yeah, and, and I, I did the definitions as best I can. And it, what is it? LeahRemedy.substack.com? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll put that. I'll I'll find that out, and I'll put that in the description uh, below the live when it but, becomes uh, no longer alive. Mikey, what was so insane to me? And not, and not unheard of. I don't want people to think that I don't understand Scientology procedure, because we do. <laughs> but when you read it. And they had the audacity to claim or try to claim that this was something that we had orchestrated, which, again, Jane Doe 1 made very clear in her victim statement today, saying in 2004, she said, and she <laughs> turned to me and said, and no, Leah, we didn't know you then. <laughs> so it wasn't orchestrated by you. <laughs> that orchestration line is, is one, of their, one of their weaker efforts. <laughs> So Shane, Shane, uh, per, per Jane Doe One's mother um, and the reports that were gotten, like you were saying, Mike, from the interrogations that were done on uh, uh, Jane Doe One as well as um, Luke Watson, uh, who's Danny's best friend, who's also a Scientologist and not willing to come forward with what he knows because he's protecting Scientology. But one, and one also of the, the son of the former president of Celebrity Center, Susan Watson. Susan Watson, who married me, by the way. Again, it's like I, I look at these pictures like of my wedding pictures or Sophia's birthday parties and I see Shane Woodruff and Todd Woodruff who, you know, Todd Woodruff was my auditor and also Katie Holmes auditor, right. uh, Scientology auditor. He was a Sea Org member and he did a video about me and like I have video of him and Sophia when she was a baby. Like, and I, it just still affects me. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, we're all telling the truth. Right. It's so evil. Like, I just can't get over the evil of it. And when people ask me, like, why are you so aggressive when talking? You know, I just ask in a question because I'm like, you don't under like the, the level of pain that everybody has to deal with every day. Yeah. It, it's very, very hard to, to bring about an understanding of the depth of depravity without yes. experiencing it yes you, you know what i mean it's like it's really you say the words and you describe what happened but it's the impact that it has on you when it happens to you is so much greater and and the the evilness of it is so much more apparent yeah. when you experience it yeah and how when your you... life is altered. It's never normal. Like when people say, aren't you so happy you're out? I'm like, I'm not really out, am I? <laughs> you know, I'm not off like partying. And you know, I don't even want to leave my house most times, Mike. And all of people who deal with Scientology know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I go to get my nails done. I don't like, I don't really want to leave the house. Right. And when I leave, all I'm thinking about is why is that car so close behind me? Are they going to box me in? Are they going to try to, you know, why is that person? That, why that? Why that? What is this? You know, my phone, my power goes out. My first thing is, oh my god, Scientology cut my power. Yeah, you know, my phones go out. Oh my god, they cut my phone lines. Oh my. Yeah, I I I hear you, and and you look around, and every person that you meet, you go, hmm, I wonder if that's a plant. Hmm, I wonder if this way, person. I wonder if this person was sent here in order to get information about me. Mike, I wonder if. The how about what you're doing, what you're dealing with right now, the fight that you're in, you would think you would think <clears throat> a decent human being with an ounce of decency and empathy would not think we should harass Mike and his under 18, like his young son and his family during this. Like, there is just no level. They will not 
go to, sink to. There's no level. And it's not like, oh, I get it now. There's no level. They'll go. I, you tell people <laughs> this, you sound insane. I know. I know. You do. You sound like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we, get, we get it that Scientology is kind of out there, but, but you know. Have you heard from Tom Cruise? Has he called you? <laughs> Uh, yes. Sorry. That's it's not right. directed at you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we know all the people anything from this or have we exhausted? No, we know all the, uh, 5,476 people. See, nobody's leaving Leah. Well, they're not guys, getting bored. Do they, they want to ask us any questions? Yeah. They, there's a oh, ton. Okay. Look, okay. Here's a few that, uh, this is go one ahead. that I thought was really worth answering. Okay. Go ahead. And it, it's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull this up. Great gig in the sky. Did Danny show any accountability or humility at sentencing today? Listen, man, I was looking for it, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, it, it's like, you're looking, you're looking over there, right? You don't want to be aggressive. You don't want to be like, I'd never want to disrespect the court. And I don't know what goes on in courts. People. I really don't. I don't know if you could say like, yeah, you know, like, I, I don't know if you're supposed to raise your hand. I don't know if you're allowed to participate. You know, I don't know. I'm always asking Jane Doe, one, are you allowed to chew gum? Like, I don't know if you're allowed to chew gum. I don't want to be rude, you know? And she, like, uh, she's always laughing at me because I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to the bathroom. I don't want to get up when somebody's talking. You know, like, I don't know what to do in these situations. But you're looking, oh, so I try not to be, but I'm looking for that. You know, I'm looking at people that I used to know that they used to know. And I'm like, you know, they're telling the truth. Why are you glaring at them? Why are you, you know, um, being hostile to them in the hallway? I don't understand. Like, and I, I have to remind myself because they think, Okay, you were raped, but you shouldn't be going to the police. Okay, you were raped. You shouldn't be, you know, talking about it publicly outside of Scientology. Like, they're still thinking, like, you're still doing the wrong thing, ladies. Yeah. So we're justified in what we're doing to you and how we're treating you and how we're abused. Like, and I'm looking for some something human, something that I... You know, I heard Bijou crying and my instinct is to reach out to her, you know, and, and it's like, it's, it, and, and then I'm looking at Danny and I'm, you know, when the sentencing was, was happening and he's, he, he was literally like, he was doing something with his hand and I'm just like, do you not, is there anything you could give them, give yourself Free yourself, you know, right. like at nothing. It was yeah. almost like, okay, how how long? And I, I can't, you know, I shouldn't suppose to speak for him, you know, because it's, I don't know what people are thinking, right? A lot of people look at me and think, oh, she looks like she's, you know, in a nasty mood. And I'm not, I'm thinking about something, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what goes through the mind of somebody. <laughs> But we do know, but we do know what goes through the mind of a Scientologist. Correct. And and I, I guarantee you, he is sitting there going, "This is the Wog world. This is and, and this gonna, is Wog justice." I'm appealing this, and I have, and, you know, I have, I have, you know, a, a multi-billion-dollar cult who's willing to 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 get me the best of the best, uh, you know, in legal uh, representation for my appeal. I mean, that that's all I could think, Mike. Was yep. maybe you just are confident that something's going to be done for you? I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, here's another question, Leah. Okay. Let's see what this one is. What happens in Hollywood when you run into someone in Scientology? Do they act like they don't know you or what? Literally. <laughs> oh, we've had people not show up to events. Yeah, Giovanni Ribisi. Yeah, to the because, Emmy event. Because we were going to be there. And, right. And, and what's her name? Lizzie, Lizzie uh, Moss left the room oh elizabeth moss <laughs> yeah yeah she left the room when we were to receive an award 
uh, for the aftermath docu series. She she had to she had to leave during that part, part. Uh, and then came back. But like at a party, they'll literally turn their back or walk out of the party or walk out of the room. They they and, can't even say hello. And to it's you. not just in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. I have been uh, like I live near the Flag Land base, so I walked into a movie theater and seen a bunch of Scientologists sitting there. And when I sit down, they get up and leave the movie. Oh yeah, literally. Yeah. Or I walk into a supermarket and I see see one and they run away and leave. Like yeah. they don't finish their shopping. They run away and leave. Yeah, my, my brother William was was at a funeral or uh, and his father was there and he just as soon as he saw William, he walked into another room. I yeah. It's yeah. it's it's nuts. It's yeah. total, total yeah. lunacy. Yeah. Okay, here's one. Amy Scobie. Amy, hi. <laughs> As... Always on alert. Yeah, because Amy and I were at a Greek restaurant and we saw through the, you know, she's, she was facing that way. I was facing that way. So I saw through the mirror some guy come in, sit down, and have water. We're like, who walks into a Greek restaurant and orders water? Not even bottled water. You know what I mean? Like, you're in LA, bro. You don't, you don't drink from the top. Like, we don't, we don't do that. And so we both were like, is that weird? She was she was looking at him, and I was looking at him through the mirror. Uh, and then the odor came over and said, "I was like, oh, okay." But we were immediately like, "Weird yep. guy." Yep. Yep. It happens <laughs> all the time. Love happens you. Happens all the time. Okay. Does Mike really read all this? This is someone saying, "Is Mike actually reading all the comments?" I try to read a lot or as many as I can. Obviously, there are literally hundreds of hundreds of them and i try to pick through uh and see grab one and go oh there's one we could definitely yeah but you and that. i you and i talk too long for each question that's the problem is that the problem i think so i think we okay. need to rapid answer because then we get some more i don't know you guys tell us what you think okay here we go zachary antel out of curiosity, is there anything Scientology does that you can see being repurposed to become a positive thing? Nope. Like how Lex Friedman said auditing could be turned nope. into a form of therapy. Nope. No, because the – well, I'm not going to give a long-winded answer. The problem with that is you can't, you can't actually separate one part of Scientology from the other. It's all intertwined, and there's – parts of it that fit into other parts of it and you're just not going to ever ever um be able to pull as mm -hmm. as someone said the raisins out of the turd <laughs> <laughs> the raisin out of the turd 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 yes the turd turd i'm horrible okay. at Danny was actually glaring at them still. No, no, he wasn't he glaring wasn't. at them. No, he wasn't. I And I actually wasn't, I wasn't actually looking at Danny while they were speaking. Like I said, I, my focus, I mean, I actually turned my body this way and, you know, he's over there and then all of his supporters and all the rapist supporters are, and child molesters also were uh, in attendance of Scientology and they were there. So I, I literally turned my back, not purposely, but I wanted to be solely focused on the courageous and brave women and be there in case they needed me. Um, and so I was facing that way. It was I saw him when he when the judge was speaking to him. Right. And I he was looking at her then. But when other people were speaking, particularly the D.A. or he just, he just didn't seem to have any interest or reaction to um, life, being sentenced to life. Um, yep. And and that was uh, and also uh, uh, there just no emotion throughout the whole trial, other than you know like you know like that's funny and oh that you know that like you know just uh, no no empathy no. Uh, nothing. So no. Thinks he's innocent. They did nothing wrong. He may have to sit for a bit, but he thinks he will be getting out and has to act like it doesn't bother him to stroke some egos, especially his. Hmm. Well, that's a. I I have no idea if that's true. I don't. I don't know 
what he, like Leah said, we can't figure out what goes through his head. Right. We can see what he does. We know what Scientologists generally think. Believe, but, right. You know, maybe that's true, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. Okay, here's one. Why does Scientology think they are ethical? That's actually a really, a really <laughs> because, good question. Yeah, 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 it's a great question because you know I thought I was ethical. I wasn't. Yep. Mike, you thought you were ethical. You weren't. A absolutely, but it's because <laughs> you're told that you are. Like and we're we the most ethical people on earth, the planet. And Scientologists, if L. Ron Hubbard says it, they believe it. And and also, Mike, it's being held to a standard that is unique to only Scientology. So what is considered ethical is what is greatest for Scientology. So if you're giving up all of your life savings from your children's college fund or what you know, savings, that's a considered an ethical thing to do. Right. <laughs> right. Um, not, not reporting a crime to Scientology uh, that a Scientologist committed um, is considered ethical. So it's by the moral code and the ethics code of Scientology, which is what I said. Ain't too high, folks. Ain't too high. It's Scientology's bar of ethics. Right. It's and unethical to report a crime to the authorities. It's unethical to stay connected to your daughter, who is an advocate or a whistleblower. Uh, for victims of Scientology or a whistleblower for, the, you know, exposing the crimes of Scientology, that's considered unethical to Scientology. Yeah. I mean, the definition of ethical in Scientology is if what you are doing, saying, or thinking is helping Scientology, Correct. it's ethical. Right. If they believe that it is not, it is unethical. Right. So as long as you're inside the the bubble of Scientology, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. really believe that if you're doing things that are beneficial for Scientology, you are very, very ethical. Mm -hmm. And those things that are beneficial for Scientology may be very not beneficial for other people. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is sort of another thing of the essence of Scientology. It is a uh, one-dimensional view of the world. And mm -hmm. that one-dimensional view is only, is it good for Scientology or is it mm -hmm. not? And if yeah. it's not, you're bad and you're out mm -hmm. ethics. Mm -hmm. And if it is, you're good and you're mm -hmm. in ethics. Mm -hmm. And that it, it's as simple as that. Right. That was a great question, actually. Yeah. I, I never really thought about that as a question. <laughs> I, same. Great question. Yep. Here's another one. Can he still be a Scientologist from prison? He has no income to pay them anymore. Well, he's also not going to be able to go and get any auditing and, <laughs> and training. Uh, but you... This is uh, Well, this is... Mike, is that, I mean, is that true? Because you have people like James Barber who you know, is a celebrated Scientologist. You have the mother of the Burbank daycare who's a celebrated Scientologist whose son molested Scientology babies. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, can you can you still be a Scientologist from prison? Oh, from I, prison. I guess so, but this, this is going to be really interesting how Scientology is now going to deal with this. All right. What are they going to deal with it at all? I mean, they have been absolutely stone cold silent about Danny Masterson being convicted. Yeah, the two hundred the two hundred Twitter accounts of Scientology have not tweeted once about uh, their their Scientology serial rapists. Yeah, and Taryn, the the champion of right. women's Taryn rights, Tausch. hasn't. Yeah. yeah, my daughter has yeah. not made any statement about Danny Masterson, even Correct. though she promised that yeah. she would right. when she was confronted by right. Danny Masterson's victims at the event that she wasn't even supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. um, the Denim Day event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Denim mm -hmm. Day event. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know what's really going to happen, whether they're going to, like, do the usual Scientology, oh, 
we got rid of him because he was he couldn't live up to our high ethical standards um you know who knows what they they're, they're going to come up with or maybe they would just remain completely mute on I think that project. it's the latter mike i think they're going to that's what the that's the stance they're going to take um and also you know remember that danny um uh financed a lot of people's uh careers that they have uh, ironically, at the same time that he was uh, being accused of rape by another Scientologist, by Jane Doe One, uh, his assistant all of a sudden had a writing gig. Uh, you know, Danny all of a sudden bought a script from his old assistant and uh, quick claimed houses to her. And, uh, you know, Ben Shulman, another Scientologist, he got uh, all of a sudden a business from Danny. And this one got a, a clothing store and she's a big stylist now so i don't know you know his sister uh, got her jewelry line so there's a lot of uh businesses right that have been started uh through danny financing them like i said you know at the same year that he was being accused of rape he all of a sudden became very generous uh to to the crew who knew about the rape um and so uh <laughs> you know brie schaefer was is was his old assistant um and so a lot of people benefit, so they might, uh, and uh, clearly, I, and this is my guess, Mike, that they're paying for the, you know, 20,000 lawyers behind the scenes, uh, the eight that showed up today all of a sudden, um, you know, so I, I assume that they're, they're paying for all that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but um, I'm guessing. And uh, I'm sure that they have to keep some, some toe, some line here with him. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And and in fact, here is a question that is because Danny, Danny uh, should have said, um, yeah, <laughs> I was trying to get help from my church. <laughs> I mean, they they have the interrogations. That's what these the, the mother's reports are based on those interrogations. Yeah. Right. Where he admitted. To the rape. Yes. OK, exactly. And and. You know, this question is is a very, very important question. Okay, go ahead. What do you think the chances are Danny will spill his guts for the civil case for brownie points with the powers that be? Now, I assume that the powers that be mean not... I don't, I don't think that means Scientology, because it, him spilling his guts would actually disclose the massive efforts to cover up the the crimes that he committed mm -hmm. by numerous people within mm -hmm. the Scientology organizations. Yeah. Like many of them. Mm -hmm. And I had always sort of thought, hey, the best defense that Danny Masterson has in this case, and probably in the civil case too, is to say, look, I was doing what I was taught as I was raised to believe was the right way of addressing things. The, my my uh, people at Scientology told me that this is what I should do. I, uh, I don't believe I was raised to not believe in the uh, WOG world justice system. I was raised not to believe that uh, you, there is such a thing as a victim, that nobody is a victim. They cause their own, you know, all of that, that, if he had laid that out, mm -hmm. that was what I believe was his only defense. Right. And he, for whatever reason, decided that he couldn't, you know, step outside the Scientology bubble and make that sort of argument, probably because of all his family members. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows what else? Maybe they got all sorts of other dirt on the guy that would have been even worse. I don't know. But. I believe that when it comes time for the civil case, Scientology is going to be absolutely panicked because Danny Masterson has really nothing left to lose. He's, he, he, I mean, I guess he has the relations with his family, but, you know, he's sitting in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, and to, to speak about what you were just touching on, Mike, you know, that that is part of the the double-edged sword here in a, in a way, because you have 
um, a person who's raised in Scientology and we are all told that everything that we think is bad or do that is bad is part of this thing called the reactive mind, part of our bad mind. Then when you get to the confidential levels and then you're like, man, I'm still an asshole or I'm still, you know, whatever. Right. Well, there's more to go. Right. There's a more to go. Um, or I'm still depressed or I'm still not that you would ever say you're depressed. You're not allowed to say that. So I tell right. you, right. <laughs> um, but I still haven't handled this. Still need glasses. Still have colds, you know, still didn't reach Tom Cruise level of never getting a cold. Um, and you're told later that, you know, maybe it's your body thetans, your spirits and the confidential right. levels that maybe, uh, so they believe maybe, you know, he has a, um, a body thetan you know, called a BT, that's a rapist. And they need to, you know, kind of exercise that out, right? And so, yes, that is kind of the theory behind w w what you're saying, Mike, that they would have been teaching him as they taught all of us the same thing, that you're not really responsible. I mean, we'll make you responsible, right? And you can't know these things until later. You can't blame your your BTs for things, right? So. Like, like you still have to take responsibility for right. right right like what happens to you but you're right he would be raised with you know you could only fix what's wrong with you here not in the in the outside world right like being arrested is not going to fix you right we can fix you right okay here's another question mm -hmm. charlie's mom question Will Bijou be forced to divorce DM? No. I, I doubt it. So. No, I think because they need her to remain happy. I know. Yeah, so they need her to, um, and you know, I guess uh, this is just my theory, Mike. I'm not saying this is true, but I would assume that they're going to be taking care of her financially to keep her happy. I would guess that that's probably true too. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, is that something that Oso would want to do, Mike? And what would be the theory behind doing that? Well, the theory behind doing it would be this upcoming problem of the civil case. Mm -hmm. This civil case is going to be a nightmare for Scientology. And I've been mm -hmm. saying it for a long time. Mm -hmm. The civil case is different than the criminal case. The criminal mm -hmm. case is very confined. We talked about this a bit last night. Mm -hmm. The criminal case is very confined and the judge confined it. Although in the second trial, there was much more about Scientology that was allowed to come in, but like the real story of what happened and mm -hmm. the cover-ups and mm -hmm. the, the, you know, fair gaming and all of that stuff <laughs> that didn't come out. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And if there's one person who could, you know, think Scientology, it is Danny Masterson mm -hmm. in that case. Mm -hmm. If Danny Masterson decided to tell the truth mm -hmm. and really, you know, just sit down and say, okay, this is what happened. This is what this person told me. This is what that person told me. I did this. I did that. They said, don't worry about it. You know, do an amends project, go wash some dishes for a bit. Everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever the 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 story is from his perspective that story would absolutely sink scientology and right. they have got to try and keep him from doing that right and, and so that would mean keeping bijou happy keeping danny somewhat because that that's the only thing that yeah. he has left right he right. doesn't have he doesn't have a life left mm -hmm. he's sitting in prison now the right. only thing that he has is his family and the connections to his family mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. And mm -hmm. I don't think that they want to risk or would want to risk um, him deciding to suddenly have a, a come to Jesus moment Correct. and Correct. tell the truth Correct. about what Correct. really happened. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And so, you know, that's mm -hmm. why I think that that is probably the case. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know how long you want to go, Lee. I know you got up really, really early. We've been doing this for an hour now. Yeah. I, you know, we could go forever. There's like an endless number of questions. 
I think that we have probably said what we needed to, you know, or you've said what. Yeah, you I just wanted to people to have insight into um, and keep focused on, you know, what these brave and courageous women have done. Um, and they deserve uh, all kinds of support um, because on behalf of, of, of Danny Masterson, um, these women's lives are changed forever today uh, because uh, using uh, having having a three billion dollar organization behind them to continue to make their lives um, help and they have a wonderful uh, support system um, and one has a wonderful husband he was there today Chrissy Bixler her husband has been with her and and uh, and, and trout has her family and um, but, you know, they have to live the nightmare of fair game and their family yeah. for doing what they did. And it's not like, oh, it's over. That's it. Their lives go back to normal. No. No. Nope. Still get harassed. Still get hunted. Still every day. Every day yeah. it's going to continue. And, you know, some could say, well, we've all chosen this life. No, we didn't. <laughs> we, we didn't think we'd have to, to because we're telling the truth. Uh, because we're standing up for victims, um, we didn't. I, I don't think I was prepared to deal with what, you know, not only what I deal with, but you know, everybody that we know. Yeah. I mean, every day there's a story um, from Valeska Paris uh, of her being assaulted uh, because she has a current lawsuit against Scientology, harassed, stalked, uh, physically assaulted in front of her young son. Um, and I could go, I can list Mike, uh, hundreds of, of incidents in the last week <laughs> from I know. we hear from, right. I and know. so I just wanted to, uh, tell you guys from my heart, you know, what I was experiencing, um, and how in awe I am of them and their families. And, uh, you know, just wanted to give you that from my perspective only because I, I want, I want them to continue to be supported by you um and 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 justice was served i mean justice was served and it means a lot to a lot of us i don't know mike has there ever been a case of this kind other than um you know 11 mary sue hubbard and, Mar and right uh, the the eleven twelve scientologists going to to prison for fair gaming government agencies the scientology is responsible for the largest infiltration of government agencies in american history yeah, you know, we say that all the time. People are like, oh my God, weird. <laughs> Has Tom Cruise called you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lily. No, wait, wait, wait. Mike, I, I just wanted to just, because I kept saying, like, I did, but I do want you guys to read this. So could you please go to, to the Substack and read it? But sorry, my gardeners are here. But Mike, Jane Doe One's mother. Yeah. Writes in this report <laughs> to David Miscavige. I just want to, this just really, uh, I, it just, uh, and I, I should have highlighted it, but it was about the press, that the press, if they knew about this, what they would do to Scientology. I know. This is from a mother who is writing about the violent rape where she says in this thing that her daughter could have died. Right. And then in the next breath, do you know what the media would do if they got this story? And this is to David Miscavige. Anyway, please, please go read it. You guys. It's, it's and, and like I said, I'll put, I'll put the link in the, in the Thanks, description Mike. of this video okay. uh, once I find it. And, um, you know, we'll be back with more. This was a bit impromptu today. This yeah, was it was. And I'm sorry if I was rambling, you guys. I just, it was no, an you emotional weren't, Leah. day. Don't, and, don't. Okay. Don't, it, it's fine. Everybody, everybody, all the comments, I am reading a lot of comments. Yeah, all no, the comments I know. are how wonderful, lovely, getting your perspective on things is always great. You don't ramble, you're just emotional. And that's what I said. That's what yeah. I said before we started. Yeah. You you bring the emotion and the perspective of, yeah. of something. I bring the no emotion and the information about, 
about all sorts of things. <laughs> and it's why we make a good team. Like <laughs> when I when I have to like repeat conversations that we've had, and I'm like, you know, and I'm pacing back and forth. And I'm like, Mike, what the F? What the F, Mike? What kind of crap were we in, Mike? I mean, this crap is going on, and what the hell? And they're like, what was Mike doing? Yeah. <laughs> I know, Lily. I know, Lily. I know, Lily. <laughs> okay. With that, thank you all for watching. All 6,000 people who are joining us live. All your comments, all your support, everything. We love you. We really do. You, you people give us strength every single day. Seriously. You really do. And we appreciate you no end. And, you know, we'll see when the next one comes. I don't know when that's going to be, but well, we'll we're going to be, be back. doing more of the OSA files, Mike, right. the intelligence uh, operations of OSA, your former employer. Um, so we'll be doing more of those. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>